acknowledge the thousands of activists and community organisers who have organised and fought for generations to protect forests and in many cases have been criminalised for their actions in doing so. Today, First Nations people and other concerned community members have come together to ensure that their concerns about the forests of Australia are heard by these people's tribunal. This group of people will be speaking on behalf of the forests of Australia. This includes the flora, the fauna, the fungi, insects and all life, as well as the waterways and other life-supporting systems within Australia's forest communities. Together, the group are challenging the federal and state government's wholesale failure to protect the ecological health and evolutionary future of Australia's forest communities. These people are drawing on their rights and the rights of the natural world as set out in the Universal Declaration for the Rights of Mother Earth. These people are also drawing on their obligation to speak for the trees and the land and to play their own part in caring for the earth. The people bringing this case come from several different forest regions around Australia and they will speak specifically for their own country or bioregions, but they are bringing this challenge on behalf of the wider forest communities in Australia. This group asserts that by allowing the mass destruction of the members of the forest communities, the federal and state governments are violating the rights of Australia's forest communities to exist, to thrive, and also to evolve. <coughs> the extent of this destruction can be seen in a simple map that we're having a look at in hard copy now. Hopefully you can see it from wherever you're sitting. As you can probably see or hopefully see from a distance, this map shows the dwindling extent of forest cover in Australia. On the left is the image before British invasion and colonisation of this continent in 1788. And then on the right it shows the extent of forest cover today. The white parts are the areas that actually no longer contain forest at all. This image will be available on the website and it's also going to pop up in some of the slides. And it's outside here. So further, this group also seeks a range of restorative justice actions from government and from the peoples of Australia. The people who are bringing this case are Rob and Gloria Williams, together for the First Nations people, Susie Russell from the North East Forest Alliance, Jeff Eckley from the WA Forest Alliance, and to support this preliminary hearing, two expert witnesses have also been invited. That is Martin Taylor from the Worldwide Fund for Nature, who will give scientific expert evidence about the current status of forests in Australia, and Joe Bragg, who's kindly joined us from the Environmental Defenders Office in Queensland, who will give expert legal evidence about the current status of the laws in Australia that are meant to protect forests. In summary, this case on behalf of the forest communities of Australia, we ask the Tribunal to bear witness to our concerns. The destruction of forest communities since 1788 is so significant that we believe that ecocide has been committed by the government of Australia. <coughs> In accordance with the Universal Declaration for the Rights of Mother Earth, the rights of the forests to exist, to thrive and to evolve have been violated and we must take restorative action to enable our forest communities to regenerate. Since invasion and colonisation, First Nations peoples have been excluded from the governance of forest communities. And we the people, speaking for the forests, demand that governments and the broader Australian community enable First Nations people to exercise their rights as traditional owners and lead in the governance of our forests. That we must create rights of nature laws for Australia's forests to recognise their rights as living entities and that we will advise the federal and state governments about firstly, the failure of our existing legal system to protect the health of our forests. Secondly, immediate law reform that should, do, that should take place. Specifically, we are calling for law reform that ends the exemption from the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act that applies to native forests in regional forest agreement areas. The current regulatory framework sees the management of public native forests handed to state governments under 20-year regional forest agreements, or RFAs, with disastrous consequences for forests and threatened species. Logging is currently treated differently from any other action that impacts on matters of national and global environmental significance, given its own separate, accredited, purpose-built legal and management regime. 
Under this, state governments continue to fail to take any of the necessary regulatory or legal actions to, prote to protect irreplaceable threatened and endangered species habitat. Forest biodiversity and threatened species would be protected to a higher standard if regulated under the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. And we call for immediate law reform to ensure that this occurs. Thirdly, that we will advise the federal and state governments about a new legal approach to protecting forest communities. And they are our recommendations today. If it pleases the tribunal, I'd like to call the first witness for the forest matter. Can I please call Rob and Gloria Williams to the stand? place in the same area 
at the same time. And if that hope and dialogue, hope and communication, and also respect and acknowledgement can happen, I tell you what, we as black fellas can teach a lot, a lot of white people a lot, a lot of things about our country. But you've got to come in respect and acknowledgement and have that open communication, have that open dialogue. If that don't happen, then you are showing me disrespect and I want tolerate for disrespectful people, no matter whether you're black, white or brindle, I want to tolerate with it. Um, Rob, if you'd like to stay there, I think the next thing that happens is we have a yarn, so is that all right? Or you want to, yeah, please. Kanyalela, Ngayabu, Wajang Dugan. Wadela, Kanya Lela, Nayabu, Wadam, Jogun, Wadela, Kanya Lela, Nayabu, Wadam, Jogun, Wadela. Here, what mother country is saying all over? Here, what mother country is saying all over? Here, what mother country is saying all over? Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You are asking us to put our trust in a law that has stripped everything away from us. You are asking us to do this, to put our trust in a law that has stripped us as a people, that downgraded us and has ripped us from our country, from our law. It's hard for us to be here. It's hard for us to trust. The only law I trust is my law, because it never changes, it never fails. Our old ancestors, I put my trust in them, I called on them this morning, I call on them all every day, ask, help me, and they have to come. They have to come, because I am their daughter. I am their granddaughter, I am their great-granddaughter, they have to come, I call on them. Their law is based on love for country, nothing else. Love for everything what's in, the, in Mother Earth. The spirituality of Earth is paramount. Our ancestors, I have no rights to leave destruction for my next generation. I have no rights to do that. My footprint must be as pleasant and as gentle and as sweet as possible so that my next generation can come and be happy in that space. Mother Earth has waited long enough and I'm sorry, too much disrespect. And we are asking for our law that is our human, that has established himself here in the 1700s is asking me now to trust them and telling us to say, wait back there, me, our sister here, to wait our turn again. We should be leading this. Because our ancestors had it right from the get-go. Enough with the disrespect. It has to stop. Mother can't wait any longer because parts of the country has already started to reject the children. It's rejecting the people. The earth is getting poisoned. Our people are getting sick because when mother gets sick, I get sick. You need to understand that. We are the descendants of these ancestors of this country. They come for us. They are listening to us. Time for disrespect, destruction, desecration has to stop. No more now. I don't want to support laws that enable them to do that. I will not support a law that enables them to still come in a back door and have a go at Mother Earth. Thank you.
Thank you. I think we will have a good breath now. Listen with respect. Mary, Irene, do you have any questions? Okay. Um, Mark, I, I just found it hard hearing. I just wondered if you could um, go over what you were saying about the native title and what you said there were 19, uh, um, 19 forests and 11 national parks. <laughs> Sorry? Other way around. But yeah, I, was, I just want, I, I didn't hear um, that, sta that comment clearly enough. I just wondered if you could go back over. Sorry to ask you to. It is 19 forest and 11 national parks that was given back to the Githable people under that native title. And when we found that when we were fighting um, the forestry company um, for Donaldson State Forest, they came under a legislation of an indigenous land use agreement, all right? Our people, our whole people, they fought very hard to give evidence for Githable native title. And all of a sudden, you got an indigenous land use agreement that's come behind and they water that native title down to their, what they wanted. And that what gave forestry authority and the power to come and knock down the forest. We said, we said, we said as Githable people, stop the native title, stop the indigenous land use agreement, we will stand as a tribe. And when we stood as a tribe and put a blockade up against the forestry, they had no choice but to come and sit with the Githable people because we ain't going to tolerate with the laws and the legislation of the Native Title Act. Consent determination was given back to us way back in 2007 and it's 2016 now and I don't know nothing about that legislation of the Native Title Act. To me, it is rubbish. It is corrupt. It is something that is not meant for my people because all the power, all the authority, it is gone and it is given to the white government to come and do whatever they want to do on my country without any consultation, without any open dialogue, without any respect, without any acknowledgement. I won't stand for it, as I was saying. We put that blockade up at Donaldson State Forest. Then all of a sudden, they came and they sat with me. They sat not only with me, they sat with my elders, my tribe and my ancestors. And I said to them, I don't want to have a meeting in your office or your building. I want it out on country. You come to Donaldson State Forest and you see what the harvesting crew already done. Within two weeks, they just absolutely made a bloody mess. And when we seen that, no, no, you get your bloody machines off of you. We never gave you authorization to bring those in here. But they said, oh, the forestry gave it to us. Stuff the forestry. We're talking here. The original tribe of this land. Take your machines out. Then that afternoon, the machines were gone. The forestry people had to come and sit with us because we were fair diggum and we were genuine. We were not going to humbug around with any government agencies. So I believe that we got the authority and the power. We open the doors and we can lock the doors as the original blood connection to country. Then when we found... <laughs> when we 
found that the forestry came. They came in 14s and 15 of them. They thought they were going to bully us. They thought that they was going to put a picture where the authority that they had was going to intimidate us. No way in the world they were going to intimidate us. We knew that in ourselves that we were at peace. And when we took the forestry office or the forestry people to our country on Donaldson State Forest, that's where we met. That's where we met. We were there as one, as a tribe. The Githable tribe stood as one, not under any Indigenous land use agreement, not under any native title legislation, rules and regulation. We stood as a tribe. And I tell you what, when you stand as a tribe, there is power, there is authority, and it is unique. And when we found that the ancestors was with us, one of my elders said he weren't going to be violent to the forestries or anything like that. Go and get me a Tommy axe. Go and get me a Tommy axe. You see over there? That's where I'll get you the witchetty grub. In our language, we call it jubal. Then all of a sudden, you got this big goanna crawling down the tree. And they came over and said to us, what do you call it in your language? We call him nyamal in our language. And when we took him back, the forestry, we took him back now. And they openly said it in public. We got no fighty with Githable. Githable don't want us here. So we're going to go. The reason for that, we told them to shove the native title where the sun don't shine. <laughs> and also the Indigenous Land Use Agreement. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>